Okay, we're on the June 2010 exam. This is page 9. Question 42. Now these go the full length of the page, but I'm only going to show enough to get the uh, answers here. The student throws a baseball vertically upwards and then catches it. If vertical upwards is considered to be the positive direction, what graph rep best represents the relationship between velocity and time for the ball? Well, let's think about this. He's throwing it upwards at some positive velocity, let's say at 10 meters per second. So it'll be a velocity of 10 meters per second. And it'll begin to slow down. And as a function of time, its velocity will change uh, because of the acceleration due to gravity. So at the end of, uh, let's say, a second, it'll be traveling at zero. And then it starts to come back downwards again. If you look at this particular graph, you think, all right, it goes in one direction, then the other. But now we have to remember, if it's coming downwards, that's going to be considered negative velocity. And it starts at zero and starts picking up speed coming downwards. So we really want a graph that crosses the zero line. If we look at the choices, choice four is the correct answer. Now, this caught a lot of people. Um, because you, you think maybe this one, it's uh, you throw it up in the air, it stops, it comes back down, but that's not the velocity, that's kind of the, the distance, and actually this graph better represents that idea. So you have to be very careful, and with these graphs, I like kind of drawing one ahead of time, just thinking about it and kind of giving me a graph of what I think it's going to look like, and then go find it. And that's uh, the correct answer for number 42. 43. A 5 kilogram sphere starting from rest, so velocity initial equals zero. And it falls freely 22 meters, so it falls a distance of 22 meters, in a time of three seconds. Okay, before I read any more of this, I'm going to see what I can do. Well, I've got the distance and time, so I can determine average velocity. Average velocity is distance over time. And uh, 22 divided by 3 is going to give me about uh, 7.3 uh, meters per second is the average velocity. And if my initial velocity was 0, then my velocity final is going to be uh, 14.6 meters per second. All right, so let's read. Compared to the acceleration due to gravity, near the Earth's surface, the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of this planet. So somehow we're on another planet. So uh, we want to know what the acceleration due to gravity on this planet is. Well, we had initial velocity of zero, average is 7.3, meaning a final velocity of twice that, 14.6. So it went from zero to 14.6 in three seconds. Let's say our acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So 14.6 meters per second divided by 3 seconds gives me an acceleration. And this gives me an acceleration of about 4.8 meters per second squared. Uh, acceleration to gravity on the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is about half the acceleration due to gravity, which would be choice 3. One half is great. Question 44. A 15 kilogram mass, mass is 15 kilograms, it's moving at a velocity of 7.5 meters per second on a horizontal frictionless surface. What total work must be done to the mass to increase its speed to 11.5 meters per second? So velocity final is 11.5 meters per second. Well, I'm going to do it using energy. Energy, the ability to do work. A change in work is uh, a change in energy. So I'm going to do kinetic energy before and kinetic energy after, and the difference will be the work I had to do. So kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. So the kinetic energy is one-half of mass, 15 kilometers times 7.5 meters per second squared. So that's a kinetic energy of 
843.75 joules. If I want to do the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, one half of, oops, I forgot to take half of this. So the kinetic energy is 843.75 divided by 2. So it gives me a kinetic energy of about 421.8 joules. So I knew, now I do the kinetic energy, and you can see why it's so important to write the equation. Otherwise you make stupid mistakes. Kinetic energy of uh, 15 kilograms times 11.5 meters per second squared and that gives me a kinetic energy of 991.8 joules. Now you'll notice 990 something is one of the answers. It's not the correct answer. 422 is one of the answers, not the correct answer. It asks what work must be done to bring it from 7.5 to 11.5 meters per second. So it's the difference between those two. And I'm going to go ahead and guess and say that it's 570. Question 45. The circuit diagram represents four resistors connected to 12 volt source. So the total voltage is going to be 12 volts. I've got these four resistors. So the question asks, what's the total current? Total current resistance. So Ohm's law says voltage is current times resistance. So current would be equal to voltage divided by resistance. So I need to know the total resistance. And in a series circuit, in a series circuit the resistors add. So I can take 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 8 is 18 plus 6 is 24. So the total resistance is 24 ohms. So my current is going to be voltage divided by resistance or 12 volts divided by 24 ohms. So I'm looking at about a half an amp of uh, current. So I'm looking about uh, half an amp of current. That would be choice one. That was page nine.